Good morning. Is it Jatali? Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Good Cheers. Good morning, Jatali. Thank you for joining me here on On Top Radio. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Cool. Okay, so first and foremost, I did say I've got a special guest joining me all the way from the US of A. Yes, yes, yes. Whereabouts are you in America? I live in New York. Of course, New York City, if you're coming here, we might as well just come here. <laughs> it's all the only places that come to me are Miami and New York City. Very true. So, although I'm probably going to get some backlash for saying that. <laughs> well, well, anyone who's listening is going to say, that doesn't sound like much of a New York accent. Yeah, so I'm UK born and raised. Mm-hmm. Um, I live here now because my son, who is three years old, was born here and my husband is American, but, you know just kind of you know we evolve and i was like okay you know what we're here now so just do what we can over here oh so did you meet your um your husband in america yes i did so and that kind of like swayed yeah basically um my company i was working for credit suisse um and which is in the uk in london as well and you know i was down on holiday and next thing i knew I was like, you know, I have motivation to change it up a bit. Yeah. 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 All right. So talk to me about what it is that you're involved in and what you're doing at the moment. So I'm involved with K2 Bank. Um, I founded this organization after working 13 and a half years in corporate world, Mm -hmm. um, you know, doing stocks and bonds and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. I founded this organization which teaches youth about financial literacy. So we touch upon everything from stocks and bonds we teach them about credit scores and how they can start at the age of 13 to start building wow, okay. we teach them about budgeting and you know um every these are factors of life that can just help them become more responsible as adults when it comes to their relationship with money yeah um basically just trying to change that mindset yeah because kids get taught maths but they don't get taught money yeah, and it doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm from Manchester, although I lived of, of many years in the, in London, but I'm from Manchester originally. Okay. And when I was going to primary school, I remember they used to teach us at least about budgeting. Yeah. Um, but London, going to school there, I noticed that the school system was a little bit different. They didn't do that as much. Mm-hmm. Um, and finance was not as important. And then I came to the States, and I realized that here in the States, it's not on any platform really there. Um, now, as of late, they've been trying more, but, you know, I'm in my 30s, so for me, I was just like, wait, where is financial literacy in the source system to it? Right. And, you know, which started my book, um, and then from now, we have a finance curriculum, which has gone into, like, 137 schools around the U.S. Um, so how did you pitch that to schools? Because it must have been, like, a, a, for- a foreign concept to them, especially um, teaching kids so young. So... It was interesting. I had to like so my the first thing I did honestly was finding schools that had budgets that they kept returning, and that was my attack plan was finding a niche that I need to feed. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, well, if it doesn't go well, mm-hmm. you know, we could test pilot it out. And if it doesn't go well, then you know, of course, you spent your budget <laughs> to be frank. Yeah. And that's how it started out. And then after I did my first ten schools, it was easier to get into the school systems out here because then they I had a proven method yeah. and I was able to show them the percentage rate of the children who were retaining information, yeah. which every year was only increasing. Um and which every few months it was only increasing. So by the tenth class we were able to say that our kids were retaining at least sixty percent of the definitions and the terminologies that we were teaching them, including about entrepreneurship. And things of that nature. How do you capture? And, um, how do you capture that information? Do you like are the kids tested? So yes. So what I did was I created instead of a regular test, I created crossword financial crossword puzzles. Okay. So and then even that, when I pitch it to the schools, they like the fact that I wasn't just giving the kids a test yeah. because who likes to take a test? Exactly. So I created the financial crossword puzzle and I gave the kids the financial crossword puzzle. Right. They thought they were just doing an activity sheet. But in reality, I was testing the knowledge of the definitions and things of that nature. And then after that, at the beginning of the class, we do that. And then I reword the financial crossword puzzles, the the text. Mm -hmm. And then I retest them at the end of the class to see how many of the terms do they actually remember and how they learned over the eight class period. So clever. Thank you. You know, my brain thinks outside of the box. So oh, I just, you know, I bring that into everything that I do. Yeah. 
Um, even when we teach on ones versus needs, we have an activity sheet where the kids have to choose if they're on a deserted island, which items do they need that will help them survive until yeah, help yeah. comes. Okay. You know? Yeah. But so yeah. you must have done a lot of research. Not only, well, you got the background, you got the financial background, but I'm assuming you would have had to do a lot of research into teaching and methods of teaching younger children. So I definitely did that. Um, but honestly, I'm going to be frank with you. I have a minor in child psychology. So between mixing that and um, my finance love, right. it's really hands-on experience that I utilize to go into the schools. Because hands-on, for me personally, I've, with my nieces and nephews, I've helped them learn how to budget and save. And by the age of 16, I was able to help my nephew buy his first property in real estate, invest in his first property in real wow. estate. Um, so it's just like little things like that. And it wasn't that he had this cash cow or money that yeah. was given to him to do it. Yeah. We literally taught him how to, how do you make the calls to find a pre foreclosure and convince somebody to sell their house to you for like dirt cheap, mm -hmm. just so they can not lose their house to the bank and things of that nature. So, because I was able to successfully do it in my family, I just kind of took that blueprint and a little bit of my knowledge from the corporate world and yeah. from Seoul, and I just put that in from uni, and then I just kind of mixed it all together. Um, and now we have, like, that, and we have, like, the Kipreno Awards and all these things, um, which is really just shining a light on how smart and amazing our kids are. Yeah. Well, some of them. Uh yeah that's true <laughs> but you know you know it's funny some of our kids who are not necessarily book smart i've yeah. noticed yeah. um when you help especially when it comes to entrepreneurship yeah they have a brilliance yeah. when it comes to entrepreneurship so, so, so true i know someone who um, yes. cannot read who's got like more money than you can count it's crazy um and the same i've heard of someone like that in the, in the news too yeah. <laughs> someone, and he's in south london i won't name him because it'd be perfectly obvious to people that know him but like it, it can happen there's floyd mayweather apparently he can't read he's got almost a oh that's what i was talking about that's what i'm talking about like yeah. he can't but you know some people aren't meant to necessarily be book smart i think yeah. some people are good with their hands yeah. it's kind of like masonry like some people are great at wallpaper or like putting steps together yeah. but then you you bring them into the classroom and they'll fail every test yeah, yeah. so i feel like we have to create a different kind of testing for those youth yeah. because it's not that the person's stupid they, they just use a different part of their brain so, so, so that being the case and do you have different types of tests because i'm assuming that the schools that you go into and the classes that you go into you'd have different types of children who um uh who who take to different types of teaching so do you um, mm -hmm. create different like lessons for different types of students or is it just one blanket lesson for all? So it's basically one blanket lesson for all. But one of the things that I do in the classroom is like I was saying the activity sheet. I just make my activity sheets arrange. Yeah. And then like when I'm in a classroom, I'll notice like, let's say for instance, of course, in like in New York, you get like cheeky kids. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I go to inner city areas that like, let's say the kids are a little bit rougher. They might talk more aggressively. Mm -hmm. So when I reach in those areas, I'll realize that the activities are more hands-on. Whereas I'll say, um, okay, let's do an actual activity. Let's create a business plan. You know, and then I teach them about creating a business plan, like a mini shark tank for the kids, right. um, in which they actually get hands on and create like a, a big poster for their business. And they talk about how they're going to market their business and things of that nature. And before you know it, they're actually learning the terminologies and learning the basics of business, but they're still having fun. So, yeah, so when, you know, it's just about engaging them. When was the first class that you taught? How long ago was it? The very first class that you actually taught? January 11th, January 25th, 2017. That was my first class. Oh, first class. Oh, okay. um, so you're, you're, oh, so you're basically almost two years in now from actually teaching. Yeah, tech, yeah. so January will make us t two years teaching, mm -hmm. um, but you know how the school year runs. Um, mm -hmm. So with the school year, technically now this year, this school year we're going into um, 209 schools. Wow. Um, and then our first school year, we basically, we went to 137 schools total, including summer classes. Um, so now I'm looking to hopefully start doing this in the UK next, which mm -hmm. is going to be the next step, is that hopefully next school year coming at home. So I'm assuming now that you're not involved in working for any other company. You've got your own business and you're, you're, you're leading that. Facts, yeah. Mm -hmm. So my main attention goes to the Kipreno Awards and 
our kids who bring curriculum and books. And then on top of that, like I have two books. So I have a picture book called Road to Riches Mm -hmm. for ages two to 11. And then we have a chapter book called Wants versus Needs, Mm -hmm. um, which is for ages, I say, eight to 18. Mm -hmm. Um, Although, you know, if it's eight to 11 years old, I would say an advanced reader who's reading like Harry Potter type books. Um, Yeah. So So who wrote these books? Yeah, so I wrote those books. That's actually how it started. I had a curriculum for writing a book first. Right. So I wrote the book, yep. and after I wrote the book, someone said, you know, to put this into the source systems, it'll be easier if you had a curriculum. Right. And then I spent my nights on YouTube and um, on Udemy uh, online classes and just learning everything I could about creating a curriculum, how to do, what, what are the compliances, and, you know, and after I did my research, I created my first curriculum, and then I tested it. Yeah. And, you how know, you shockingly, it? I tested it. So from January 25th to June, which was like barely um, five months, I would guess to say, in the source systems, yeah. I found 10 souls. Four of them did not pay me. Um, I were souls that I did completely for free. And then the other six were souls that I highly discounted just so I could test it in the actual classroom. Sure. And then when that went successful and I, we saw how well the kids were retaining the information, yeah. that next following school season which was september 2017 going into june 2018 yeah. we went into a total of 137 schools wow. um so it was and it was like i didn't know how i was going to do it but like i had amazing teams like my board members just our best and people like that who really just stepped up and were like yeah. jay what do we have to do to mm-hmm. make this you know go further well i was going to ask about the team so i'm going to assume it's not you personally directly um teaching in two uh, 127 different schools <laughs> So, um, how is it done? Do you have so you have a team of people that work directly for you, or do you provide the curriculum to the school, and the school has one of their teachers deliver it? So, we person come in. The we is back then was only three people. It was only three teachers, and I don't know how we did it. It was in California. It was like all around the US. Yeah. Uh, we had schools in Florida. We had all these places in New York City, of course, in Yonkers and Jersey. And we person, the three of us, just divvied it up and did it. Mm-hmm. Um, but this year we have 17 teachers that are coming on that have come on board um and it's you know but the schools don't we don't give it to the teachers to do because we train our own staff so we train our teachers we give them the workbooks um and then we have them go in directly and like for the uk for instance it'll be like two or three of us that will come out to the uk when we do the uk schools okay so talk to before we go into the uk um leg of your 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 teachings um let's talk about the the kid, kid, oh, it's, it's hard for me to pronounce. The Kidpreneur Awards. Is that right? <laughs> Kidpreneur. That's really a, yes, that's perfect. Um, perfect, perfect. What, what is it, and how did it come about? So, Kidpreneur Awards. Um, I created it. It's basically an award that honors you who are either falling into the categories of entrepreneurism mm-hmm. or philanthropy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, giving back and things of that nature, and then the kids and adults who are creating the ladders for them. This idea came about because when I was in the school systems, I would meet kids who would say things like, oh, only if you're Willow Smith or Jaden Smith, you know, would you be able to be an entrepreneur, a successful entrepreneur and have like a multi-million dollar business. And I would be like, no, but what about this kid and that kid? And they would be like, I've never even heard of that child. Yeah. And, you know, it's, you know, when you do see award systems that are honoring youth, it tends to be the ones who are already yeah, featured yeah. on Essence or major yeah. social media platforms. So who have like 200,000 followers, etc. Yeah. And so I wanted to create something where our youth could see the kids who were not necessarily that, a mixture of that and the ones who were unknown, mm-hmm. who were doing amazing things. So, how do you, so how for our first kidpreneur... Um, Google, um, cyber stalking on social media, looking through like, you know, putting in the hashtag Kipano to see what pops up. Yeah. Um, some of them literally when I go vend at an event, I would selling my books, I would see them there with their own table selling their books and I would take their business cards. And I never knew what was gonna happen when I was taking business cards, but then when I had this opportunity to create this awards, I was like, you know what? This yeah. is perfect time to use them. So like to give an example, uh we do it during financial literacy the Tracy month, which is April in the United States. Yeah. And, um, you know, last, so April was our first one last year, April. And we honored a youth who was like seven years old and makes two twos. And she makes a hundred thousand dollars a year making wow. two twos. Imagine that. Um, we, you know what I mean? And then there's this other little kid who makes, um, 300,000 selling slime to other slime. youth. Slime. Yes, bro. I was like, are you kidding me right now? Um, 
But, you know, it was, and it was a regular kid who his parent gave him $50 mm. and gave him a lot of pushback. Like, I don't want you making a mess in the house, making yeah. a mock around the house. Yeah. And then, like, look, he turned that into a $300,000 business. Yeah. Um, and then we had another kid who, like, in philanthropy, she donated, like, thousands of, like, scarves and s- socks and things like that to homeless people. And now she's at 10 years old trying to open up her own shelter, um, community center. So it's like, at 10 years old with two girls raising up money and she's already opened up like wells in africa like around ghana she's opened up water wells and things like that in africa at 10 That's she's amazing. saved up the money and she's done these things ever celebrated so it's amazing that you're doing this because no one like I'm, I'm, thank I, you I imagine anybody listening hasn't got a clue about these people that you're talking about yeah and that's the cool so doing this platform that is the goal is to start shining light on the amazing entrepreneurs and philanthropists we have in our own backyard yeah. and then the adults who are creating lives for them mm-hmm. so we honored like adults like some of them were celebrities and some of them weren't known for their philanthropy yeah. um but they you know doing things like donating suits business suits for young kids to mm-hmm. have their first professional clothing to go to suits and things of that nature so um you know another person he created um back in the west indies mm-hmm. he created a computer site towers he would refurbish computers and send them back home to haiti Mm -hmm. um where he was from and he was teaching haitians how to utilize a computer and the internet and things of that nature or how to fix computers back home um you know and it's just like people who are doing amazing things like that around the world Mm -hmm. um and you know our kids need to see that representation and know that when they become rich these people don't just turn their backs on them they Uh actually do turn around and do things for them 100 percent. so i've got got 30 seconds left so just tell us about the 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 uk um when you come over to the uk like what we can expect i've now got like 20 seconds like wrap it up really all right 20 seconds all right so real quick when we come out there we're going to do some workshops empowerment days where we do self-love anti-bullying and financial literacy and just really have our kids learn more about different aspects of cohabitation and social emotional health perfect listen looking forward to you coming <laughs> over and um joining me in the studio perfect